So now that we have all the construction lines drawn out, <clears throat> it's time for us to go back and start doing things like delineating the object lines, getting rid of any excess lines that we don't need that were there for just setup purposes, like mm, this one and this one. And then also at the very end, just as we're tonal shading, we'll go in and add the final circle here that'll allow for us to see a hole drawn through this object. All right, so delineating like normal, try to make it as consistent as possible. One solid line. Again, you'll notice that for the arcs, I'm not using anything to assist with this, but when I do go through to the straight lines, I will come in and use a protractor to help make sure I'm going straight in the direction that I need to go. As I get to the tangent point here, I'm going to go back to not using the protractor and curve this line over to my other tangent point. All right, so that two-third mark where I'm tangent with the vertical then transitions into a curve where I'm tangent on the arc. At the same time, where that two-third mark is, I have a tangent line, or uh, excuse me, the arc that moves over to this tangent point here, and then continues on around to this point through the two-third mark to there. I can do the same while I'm at it with these back circles. I could even start with the vertical line if that's easier. Just connecting between those two two-third marks where the vertical line is tangent, filling in to this arc. Through this two-third mark over to this tangent point. And then this time, I'm not going to delineate this section right here. I'm going to stop at this point, not here, not here. I'm going to stop right here. Just for that one arc, that's all I'm going to see. The top circle, I see all of it. So I will delineate all the way through here. Real slow. Real steady. When you're making the delineation, it's all about going slow, making sure that I'm hitting the mark that I want to hit. I'm not going back and forth. Though sometimes that does help. You want to avoid it when you can. Here I'm going to connect these two circles together, but really this line does travel all the way down so you can see there's the first cylinder but it travels all the way down to here connecting together three circles though of that third circle i simply see this portion of it and that's it now watch here i'm going to connect this point and this one with a straight line it's already connected there with a the construction line. Now we'll delineate it where it touches tangent here. It's this arc. That's a bit of a finagle, but you get it in there. It arcs and it's at roughly the same radius as the other arc that you see right here.
from this point all the way to here is also a straight delineated line currently connected with an object line but will be a straight delineated line there and remember when I told you in the first video that we went from this point to here but then later we're going to have to go a little further and that's because this edge of this interior top face doesn't stop at the box it continues to go until it goes behind this cylinder now if you struggle with this i encourage you to look at the 3d printed object that looks like this and look at it in an isometric point of view and you will notice that it does actually go behind this cylinder i'm going to delineate it all the way even though from this point to here it wasn't really drawn in maybe a very very light construction line to begin with but I can just continue that uh, construction line that was already here. I'll continue it through to here as an object line. So now I see the object delineated. I'll get rid of a few lines to show you some things that won't be there, and it'll help when I'm tonal shading so that they don't get in the way. And it's good to use an eraser shield at this point but to help on glare and uh, make it less objects that you're seeing on my screen I'll refrain from using one but feel free to use one at this point to clean up any of these lines that you need to okay so now my next step is going to be to draw this circle up here it's a two by two that uses the same center point so one two one two one two everything i need is there except for construction line for the box the tangent point at the midpoint on each leg of this square here here and here and there tangent points small circle more challenging to do if this is half and this is whole, this halfway point would be three fourths, and just prior to that would be my two thirds. And it gets real tight, so do your best to estimate. Try to stay as consistent as possible. Going down, if this is a whole, then this is half right through here, and that would mean somewhere past that half mark would be my two thirds but not very far. If this is the half, somewhere just past that is roughly the two thirds. Again, when the circles get smaller, just like down here, they get harder to make. So you try your best. Stick with those steps though. I've marked my two thirds, so my next step is to draw congruent arcs. Always trying to arc, never trying to draw a straight line. Make it as light as you can, but you're going to have a tendency to make it a little darker because it's such a small arc. Your hand will have a tendency to push a little harder to get those tight radii. That's okay. I'm really looking at the space that's left over to see if it's fairly the same. This is always the harder one for me. That's not too bad. I have a tendency to go pretty flat with these arcs. So if you need to, just push it out a little bit further. Once you have it where you think you like it, go ahead and give it some delineation. All right, I'm, I'm okay with that one. It's not my best, but I'm okay with it. Now the tonal shading. Tonal shading is a little tricky here. Now, if we're going to use the straight line tonal shading, cross hatching, then you have to understand that the only place we would really see that is on this front face. But because I often on the front face only do one layer, uh, 
then I think it's probably okay to leave it as a consistent layering. Now, I'm going to show you what that looks like first, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some tonal shading that is cross-hatched there. But for the rest of it, around the uh, cylindrical shapes, uh, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to leave some gaps, some openings. Now, this is really best to look at the physical object itself and see what it looks like when light hits it. I'm going to start off on this far left side by making lines real tight together. Of course, vertical because of the cylinder. Even though the base is longer than it is taller, I'm still going to stick with this, the straight vertical lines. I'm going to start to open up the spacing between them ever so slightly right there, just a little bit. And I'll come back to it being fairly tight for a small, brief period. Real tight here. And then I'll loosen it again. Now, starting to get on to that front face. So I'm going to make a jump. Start to open it back up again. But on the base, I'm going to leave it tight. Up here on the arc, I'll leave it open. So now you'll see I'll transition just to the arc. Real big open space. And then tight again. Getting to be real tight as I come back around to the end of the cylinder. As I move along the horizontal part, I'll probably try to stick with four to five vertical lines per grid line. Try to stay fairly consistent, but it doesn't need to be 100% perfect, just well enough that you can see that it's the same face. As I get to this tangent point, though, I'm going to find it best to tighten it back up for just a moment, just like I did here, right through this part and over here. And then as I get to this corner, I'll loosen it back up. Making it nice and wide through here. And then tight again. Really increasing that tightness as I come around the bend. The hole works just the opposite. It's this side that's loose, and I don't do anything on this side. Real tight here at the edges. The, the smaller radii, real tight in here. As I get to this corner, I'll open it up. Now, it could be done here, and I could clean up the tonal shading a little bit, or I can come back in and add a second and third layer just to this straight part. Again, your choice if you want to do this.